All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Legacy and Libations, where we talk about life, death, and the beverages that get us through it. My name is Bill Soroka, author of Sign and Thrive, How to Make Six Figures as a Mobile Notary and Loan Signing Agent. And I'm here with my incredible co-host, John Braddock. Hey, John. Hey, Bill. How are you, buddy? So good. I've been looking forward to this show all week. Uh, I know it's been one of those days and, you know, it's our, our legacy and libations and it's four o'clock our time when we first started this thing. I thought, you know, that might be a little early for a libation, but it's been one of those days at about two o'clock. I was thinking, is it time for our show? <laughs> exactly. I think I sent you a text message saying just about the same thing, right? Indeed. Indeed. All right. Well, John Braddock is the uh, creator of My Life and Wishes. Uh, today's call uh, features first a very special guest that John will introduce you here in just a moment. We're going to talk about some of the uh, details around estate planning, the passion behind the people who uh, work in that industry. And then we're going to roll right into an actual exercise with My Life and Wishes. So if you are an account user at My Life and Wishes, you can actually Put your legacy vault together right here on this call together in a supportive environment. And then we're going to open it up to Q&A. So, John, I'm going to pass it over to you and let you introduce our co-host who made some time in her evening to join us today. Sounds great. Thank you. Um, and thanks, everyone, for joining again this week. I know uh, several of you were with us last week. We may have some new people, and I'm sure we'll have some stragglers as well. But I'd like to uh, introduce a very good friend of mine from in Ohio, Corey Wisenant. She is an attorney and an amazing person. And I will read your bio because <clears throat> I can't remember everything. You need it. Yeah. And I appreciate that. I need, <laughs> I need two cards. <laughs> so, so Corey is an attorney uh, licensed in Ohio. Her background is estate planning and documentation. That's wills, trusts, POAs, all those things that you, you notary folks know all about. And probate administration, which, again, is handling a state after, you know, a person passes away. She received her JD from the University of Dayton School of Law, and she is the owner and managing partner of the law office of K.E. Wisnant, LLC, providing estate planning and probate administration. The um, thing about Corey is we've known each other about a year. She is so passionate about educating uh, people around estate planning and helping as many people as she can to fully understand all the choices and, uh, you know, that surround their finances, their health care, their legacy, and all those things that they leave, leave behind. She's assisted single people, couples, families in creating comprehensive estate plans to protect their financial stability for themselves and their loved ones, and above all, she's a loving mother uh, of two awesome sons, a loving wife, a Cleveland native, and uh, I'm thrilled to call her my good friend. So welcome, Corey. Thank you so very much. I thanks, Thank you, John and, and Say and Bill for having me. John, I ver that was very sweet. And I am so incredibly glad uh, that you had me here and we are definitely awesome friends. So thank you so much, everyone. Um, I don't know if you have a specific question for me, but I'm happy to answer. Oh, Corey, I always have questions for you. <laughs> um, as, as you know, what we're all about, we're, we, you know, you, uh, Bill and myself, we're passionate about planning because We've had, uh, you know, experiences that have, have driven us here. And what, what this program is all about every week is to, to meet another amazing attorney, uh, talk with them. And then, then I'm going to go through and help people uh, who are willing to go step by step and, and get this important documentation completed within the My Life and Wishes platform. And you're very familiar with that because you recommend it to your clients. So sure do. thank you every for day. that. Sure. But here's my question. This is the big boom question. So Ready. I exaggerate sometimes. So I'm going to say there's about 300 different types of lawyers out there. Little exaggerate. It's probably maybe only 30 or so. But what I like to ask is, you know, hey, you could have been a corporate 
lawyer. You could have been personal injury, a defense attorney, bankruptcy, those kind of things. But you chose estate planning. So can you tell everyone, like, you know, why estate planning? What does it mean to you? Is there a, you know, a big aha moment in your life that brought you to that and, and share your passion with us? Sure. And there is. And actually, you would think that it would be in my adult years, but it wasn't. I was seven. My older sister, um, well, I should say this. I'm one of seven children, and I'm number six out of seven. And uh, I am the baby girl. I say that a brother believed me. And before each and every one of us walked out of the door at the age of 18, my parents insisted upon having each and every one of us sign a health care power of attorney. They told us that if that we were walking out of the door, that, that they were still going to have the ability to help us if we needed it. Hmm. And I thank you, God, that they did it because the sister that is right above me would not be living today if they didn't. Hmm. She, at the age of 21, was hit by a car. She had gone to a concert and, um, and a drunk driver drove through the crowd as the concert was being let out and my sister was hit. Wow. If she had not signed that power of attorney and had it on file um, with her doctor's office, which is where my parents took it, they, the, um, the hospitals down there would not have known who to call, what to do, you know, considering she's unconscious. And they called my father and he was down there within 24 hours and started being able to make life-saving decisions for her. And so to this day, she just is going to be 53 this year. She has two sons, something they didn't think was going to be able to happen after her accident. And uh, that really, that experience is with our family all the time. Every time I see her, it reminds me of why I do what I do. Hmm. That if it saved my sister, it could save your family too. Wow. And if I can get in front of you to do it, and I know that I'm in Ohio, so I may not be able to help you, uh, West Coast folks, but I know people all across the country and I wanna help you to find someone if you don't know, or if, you're, or if your clients don't know of someone to know, like, and trust um, to get these documents done. You just never know what can happen. Yeah. Um, so yeah, my, my why is a little personal. Um, I also, my second piece of my why is I wanted a career, um, and first of all, I love the law, um, and I wanted a career that would allow me to be mom. Um, that you mentioned that I have two sons, one is 11, the other is three. And um, this allows me, uh, this uh, being a, an estate planning attorney is not only fulfilling, but it allows me to stay home and be a mother. Um, I write wills in my PJs and my kids are right beside me. So I get to have the best of both worlds. I love that. <laughs> wow. Corey, Thank you for sharing that story too. Um, I think these these personal brushes with death or some kind of experience with this drives so many of us. But you said to, you said a couple of things that really stood out. I wonder, do you mind if I dig in a little bit? Please do. I'm going to go backwards by the most recent. First, I don't I don't think that when people think about life work balance that attorney is what would jump out as the career for no, that. you're right <laughs> so it sounds like maybe you're running a virtual law firm is it virtual it is and, and i it's funny because i just wrote an article about the rise of these virtual law firms right now can you elaborate why more about how and why you got into that sure so um, I actually um, modeled it. I, I have gone through several different things with the law when it comes to, to estates, um, but I worked for an elder care firm. I was their estate planning attorney. Um, and I actually, even though we had an office, I spent a lot of time going to, um, to the nursing homes and meeting the clients either in their homes or in, you know, in their apartments at the nursing home. And so they very rarely came to us either because they physically couldn't or it was just easier for them to stay where they were. And so I realized that estate planning attorneys don't need an office, that this kind of work, because it's such an emotional piece of law, you know, that it, um, it's even more comfortable if you can do it in the person's home. And so I realized that I really didn't need an office and I love it that way. 
I don't have the overhead. I don't have to worry about people feeling um, like they have to be nervous when they come to see me. You know, being an attorney makes people nervous or I'm coming to see an attorney makes people nervous. Yeah. Actually being an attorney makes people nervous too. I'm not going to lie, but <laughs> I say, but coming to see one makes people nervous. And if I'm coming to you, it's like, it's personal service. And um, you're able to really provide that one-on-one -on -one interaction where they're in their own element. Mm -hmm. And so they get to talk about something very personal in their own living room, you know, rather than feeling like they're in a public space. Uh, so that's what I do. So I guess I'm kind of a hybrid. You know, I do my intake meetings um, all on Zoom, but obviously document signings have to be pen to paper. And so I meet them at their homes. And I have um, an intern and she comes and is my witness. So we go together and um, it's really nice. You know, they really, uh, the, my clients really seem to enjoy the fact that they, you know, can be in their pajamas if they want to. Um, you know, my, my, my biggest piece is that I'm going to say being an attorney to me really means that I'm just a person that can help you. And I've got letters behind my name. I'm just a person, you know, that I'm no bigger or better than anyone else out there. I just have the a degree that can actually help you to protect yourselves. So why not do it in a space where you're comfortable? Mm, I love that perspective on that. And it's it's becoming more popular in the legal community, but there's still a lot of the old, the staunch old oh, yeah. way of doing things. Especially in my field. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what I mean. Now, the other question I had for you was uh, about your story and the gift that your parents really gave having those types of conversations. So for people who are on today's call, what would you recommend as a first step to have those, their hard conversations about life, death, and getting your affairs in order? Well, I'll say this. I, to me, the, I want to say even forgotten piece or say our um, generation, if you want to call it that, uh, when it comes to estate planning are the 18 to 26 year olds. Mm. And I try incredibly hard to get in front of as many parents and as many of them as possible because they're still, they are adults. They are legal adults, but they are still considered children, which is understandable. I can tell you at 18, I wasn't ready to be an adult. I don't even know if I'm ready right now. You know, so <laughs> um, I really think that they are a target market that needs to be addressed when it comes to estate planning. And so that's why I think my parents were really intrepid, you know, in the fact that they had those conversations with us then. And it might be also because they're physicians, you know, so they've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly um, working in, uh, you know, emergency rooms and, you know, in, in hospitals. So they know what can happen to a person when they walk out the door. Um, and so I really want to um, get in front of as many people as I can, but especially those 18 to 26 year olds, because they think they're invincible. You know, we all did. And yeah. so if something happens to you, they are not like your parents who no longer step in and make decisions for you. So I know people usually say, well, they don't need an estate plan. They don't have anything. Their most precious asset is themselves. It does I say, so you need the power of attorney, you know, for both healthcare and finances. You need that HIPAA release so that your parents can call in and actually get information about what's happened to you. And if you don't trust your parents, I am in no way judging that. You just need someone that is over the age of 18 that you trust implicitly to make those decisions for you. So why don't you come and talk to someone like me to figure out what can be done so that you have that in place? Regardless, you know what I mean? If you think you don't have a lot or anything of that nature, you want to protect you. Um, so as I said, it's never any, I always tell everyone, if you're 18 years and older, come see me. You know, I want to, I want to get in front of those people. That is so critically important. And so many people just don't know. And, and it actually surprises me that, um, you know, colleges and universities as, as part of that, uh, you know, uh, in enrollment process. I agree. That, you know, much like when you go to the doctor, you know, they always ask if you have a, you know, living will, do you have this, do you have that, you know, shouldn't they be asking or talking to the parents, you know, does your child, because now they're an adult, have this? Because my biggest nightmare would have been when my daughter was, uh, you know, down at Mizzou and I was up in Wisconsin at the time, not being able to get a hold of her. And after, you know, 
the, the anguish and the time finding out that she was in the hospital, but incapacitated and trying to ask doctors and call in the hospital, give me information. They'd be like, I'm sorry, sir. Legally, we can't give you any of that information. I'd be like, it's my child. Like, well, it is, but she's an adult. Uh, and, uh, you know, people just need to do it. And, you know, fortunately, your parents went through that exercise with you guys and way ahead of the curve on that one. That was the hardest call. I'm like I said, I was seven. And to this day, I have every memory of seeing my father answer that phone and hear that my sister may not live. Mm. And that'll shake me for the rest of my life. And if I can prevent it for other people's children, I want to do the best I can. Uh, Amy just put a great, Amy just put a great comment in the chat that she's seen situations where a child, the medical disorder, you know, mental or physical, unable to perform daily care of themselves. Uh, parents were up the creek, man, because they didn't have that POA. The Makes autism difference. community is a big one too. The you which know, one? That, uh, I think what's really difficult when it comes to the children autism mental, spectrum. Yeah, mm -hmm. with mental disabilities or even intellectual disabilities is the fact that you're uh, say an attorney is not able to have them sign anything that they can't understand. And so sometimes you may not be able to get a POA that you may end up having to get guardianship over them. Because if they can't understand what they're signing, any attorney worth their salt, especially ethically, should not be allowing that child to sign anything. Or mm -hmm. like even any person sign anything that they can't um, have the testamentary capacity, which means that you understand um, the terms of what you're signing um, to do so. So yeah, I, have, a guardianship, I have a son. Is hard. I have a son who's 30 years old. He's on the spectrum. Um, the day when he turned 18, um, I uh, took over guardianship of, uh, of person and healthcare and uh, in the state. And, and that's the only way to do it because he wouldn't be able to sign any kind of a document. Mm. Actually, there's a oh. question, if you don't mind, that I want to address that I'm reading. Yeah, right now. let's do it. Yeah. Okay. So it's, um, it says, can folks anywhere in the U.S. just print POA and help by, um, health and financial forms found on the internet instead of going to an attorney and have those forms notarized? I just did a, um, a, a webinar all about this. And so I really want to address that. Yes, you can. It is legal. You can definitely do it. However, let me give you a little bit of an analogy. So, and actually this comes from my intern. I can't even take credit for it. So you're going to see, let's talk about, you know, those DIY forms versus attorney-made forms. Um, I did this. She gave me the analogy of cheese, which I know sounds a little interesting. Just give me a, just give me a minute. Go on. So we've got a slice of Swiss cheese and a round of Swiss cheese. Both are cheese. Both are edible. Both are fine. However, your DIY is your slice of Swiss cheese. And the reason being is that it's got holes. And what that also, I'm saying what that means when it's in terms of those documents, what you don't have is that ability to ask questions about what's in that document. So if you're signing something that you don't understand, because there's a lot of legalese in those, in those things. If you don't understand what you're signing and you're giving the person that you have named permission to do anything that's written in that document or vice versa, not what's ever not in that document, they're not going to be able to do. So if you don't know what should or should not be in there, because you're not an attorney, you could be setting yourself up to fail. And so I realized that it looks like I'd love for the people to come to me because they could pay me. I could care less about that. Yes, don't get me wrong, I want to get paid. But what I really want to make sure is that you have the most complete and comprehensive documents possible. And the only way you're going to have that is for somebody that has a degree and somebody that's going to be um, versed in those laws. The other piece is you have no idea whether or not that, that document is up to date with the law. So if you print it off the internet and it hasn't been updated in four years, the law changes every day. That is our job. We are here to make sure that your documents stay up to date with the law. So if you've signed that and then you let it go, that could be a problem. 
So again, you want to make sure that you have somebody, if you sign them off the internet, at least get someone to review it for you. Because if there are things in there, again, that you don't understand, if you've signed it, you've now given permission to the person you've named to do exactly those things, whether you wanted to or not. Mm. So I hope that that answers your question. Yeah, good hey, question. Corey, um, I know you're on a, on a tight schedule and yeah. I want to be very respectful of your time. But no um, Ev Sharp out in California just posted a question. And yeah. I think it's great. How can I tell a good attorney from an unknowledged? Another one. Okay. So what you, I say, at least in my opinion, if you are talking to an estate planning attorney and all they want to know is your name, your phone number, your address, the names and addresses of your children and where you want your stuff to go, period. They draw out those documents, you sign them, you pay them and they leave. That to me is not the sign of a really good estate planning attorney. You need one that is going to ask you about your why. And what I mean by that is someone who is engaged with the reason that you want these documents done. I actually have a psychology degree, so it makes a little bit, uh, um, I'm a little bit more of a unicorn in that, in that regard. And the fact that I care more about the why than your what, as in just writing the document. You want someone that is going to be able to really make you a comprehensive document by asking you your background asking you the reasons that you want it, talking about charitable giving, you know, whether or not you want to give to a charity. What is your true goal when it comes to estate planning? Do you want to do probate avoidance? Do you want to have tax exemptions? Do you want to protect for young children? You know, do you have any children with special needs? There's a whole, I have a 45, I think it's either actually up to 47, a 47 question um, Google document that I ask my clients to fill out for me before we go to our intake form, our intake meeting. I give them a week and a half to do it because I want to know all of the reasons that you need an estate plan or things that I need to know about you to give you that comprehensive estate plan. So when you start interviewing attorneys, I want you to see one where their passion level lies. Two, if they're just paper pushers because all they want to know from you is the bottom line. And three, whether or not they're actually, when you see that intake form, if it's any less than five pages, any less than I'd say about 10 pages, then they're not asking you enough questions. Mm. At least that's how I feel. Well, all right. I'll, uh, I'll try and find some. I actually posted uh, on LinkedIn today and I'll put it into the chat. Um, um, questions that you should be asking a state of planning attorney. Which that's right a there was my webinar last month. <laughs> yeah. Nice. I do one yeah. every, oh, so anybody who's on this call, I do one a month um, and uh, it's all free. You can, and you can sign up and say I'm Eastern time. So I know some of you are Western time. If you, um, I'm going to put my LinkedIn information in here for you. Feel free oh, to, um, to connect with me so that you can see whenever I'm doing these and I'd love to have you. So I can give you a lot of good information about you know, how to find a good attorney, you know, what to do in those situations. Um, my next one is called The Good, The Bad and The Ugly, all about estate planning. And so they're gonna be, uh, I, it's gonna be my case study of a lot of the things I've gone through so you can hear what was good, why it was good, how I helped that person do it. The bad, where there were some good things and some things that shouldn't be, and then there's the ugly stuff that I was in probate for two and a half years for. <laughs> you know, so I wanna show you how to avoid getting to that ugly stage and how to be best with the good. And about the 18 to 26 year olds, that's the May one. That one's gonna be all about my sister. So you, I, I definitely say come and listen. And if you've got, uh, if you're in the Cleveland area and you've got uh, those young adults, bring them with you. All right, awesome, Corey. So sorry, everybody, that I have to jet. I've got my three-year-old son who I'm surprised has not come through that door right now. But uh, if you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to email me. Um, so like I said, uh, sign up with me on LinkedIn. And I put my, um, my link in there to set up a consultation. I do free consultations, even if you don't live in the state. If you just want to be able to ask um, questions, I'm here. Fantastic, Corey. Thank you so much for your time tonight. And thanks for hanging out. Let's show some love to Corey in the chat. Wave if you're on camera. Thank you thanks so, so much, much, everyone, for having me. All right. You have a great night. You too. Thank you. Have a great right. one. Uh, bye, Corey.
All right, everyone. Welcome. Well, welcome. Of course, you're here. Uh, guys, this is this perfect segue. We're going to roll right into uh, the uh, the next portion. But John, I'm almost thinking, would it be, can we decompress a little bit with our conversation with Corey? I think so. I think so. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's, let's do, I mean, thoughts, comments. Yeah. What's a takeaway from Corey's conversation? Anybody want to share their thoughts? I loved her energy. Oh, she it's, is. She's amazing. Sometimes attorneys are hit or miss, right, John? <laughs> exactly. I think that exactly. psychology degree has served her well. Hey, Vicki, how can we, what's your, what's your input? Um, thanks for having this call and everything. I appreciate it. John and Bill. Um, she says something about like an internship because I'm fairly new and I just want to jump into estate planning. I don't have any experience. I don't have any loan signing, uh, nor even general work, but I just want to jump into uh, estate planning. And I remember she said something about she had an intern. Yeah. Um, and I would love to do that maybe, you know, just a half a dozen times. And then I would, then I would feel confident. Um, I, is there anything out there or how do I get that? Or I wanted to ask her, but I guess uh, she had to leave, <laughs> but yeah, I can no, email her. No problem. Well, it's a great question. So let's clarify. So her intern is probably a young attorney who is either in school becoming an attorney or is just recently graduated. So okay. that's usually what that means at a law firm. Okay. Uh, for our world as a mobile notary, um, it's not usually called interning, but uh, there, as you're connecting with attorneys, because mm -hmm. we're still at, we're still at this interesting place where not all attorneys even know that there's hungry, well-trained notaries ready to be of service to them. Right. So sometimes what they like is if you offer, hey, I'll sit and observe. You do your living trust presentations. So, uh -huh. I can learn. so I think that's kind of what you have in mind, right? Like you're like, hey, can I just sit and watch three, four, five of these things? I'll learn how you like to do it. And then you can set me free. I can double your impact. You can go out and do other appointments. I'll do these for you. That type of thing, right? Yeah, that, that sounds like a good idea. You know, because every because every lawyer, I guess, attorney does it a little bit different. Exactly. So I can say, you know, I'd love to see how you work. Um, and then I could replicate it when I go to their homes or meet them wherever. Um, so that's a good segue. Yeah, yeah that's perfect. And those, okay. and those opportunities exist. In fact, yeah. with, with attorneys in particular, they, their reputation is everything. If they get a bad reputation, it impacts their business forever. So they're really concerned. They really hold these appointments tight to the vest. So if you're willing to do that with them and learn their processes and do it, it can really serve you well. Okay. Yeah, that's a good way. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Great question. Thanks for bringing it up. Meredith, what's your perspective on the on Corey's conversation? Ah, I thought it was awesome. Number one, um, I, I, there was some, um, just gave me a new light on it because I mean, I'm, I'm constantly learning like little bits and pieces about the estate planning. And, and I never thought about having an 18 year old. I got three kids. So I got one in college. I got a 31 year old, and a 17 year old. So I, I never, I mean, it, it didn't even dawn on me to have them uh, to do that. So uh, definitely um, we'll um, look into that. Um, the other thing is, um, it, it made so much sense. I mean, I get it when she says she she's the attorney, right? So she's the the professional. She's the the one that know all the ins and outs. Uh, because I do a power of attorneys all the time um, for people. But you know, of course, we say as notaries, listen, I'm not an attorney. I can't give you any legal advice or any any of that stuff. So it is good information, good money for us, right? But at the same time. Um, you know, um, and even a, as an individual, you, you want someone to know exactly what it is that they're doing, even though it's not any of my business, but I get her side of the story because of somebody, because even though you say that people still go, well, let me ask you a question. I'm like, I just told you, I can't, I can't, I can't time. tell you any of that stuff. 
Yeah. Um, and then the third thing is I, I ran across, and I'm not going to say who it is or anything like that, but I ran across an estate planner. And um, I was so excited because I always prayed that I meet really good you know, people and build good relationships and network and all that stuff. And so I was like, oh my God, my dream. I mean, you know, my prayer came true. Yay. And so um, anyway, we we went back and forth and I kept, you know, keeping uh, in contact with this individual. And finally, he was like, oh, I got some work for you. I'm like, great, about time, you know, so I, I really want to learn this process and and so on and so on. And so um, he called and said, hey, do you have your stamp with you? I said, I always have an extra stamp with me. Whenever I'm out, I always carry, you know, extra stuff because you never know. If somebody needs, uh, you know, a notary or whatever. And so um, he was just really fast talking, just fast talking to me. And I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we have the paperwork and, you know, it was, it was an estate plan and the whole package he did for a client. And then he called the client on the phone. It's like, hey, I have the notary here. And where are you? Are we going to come and do whatever? Sign, sign the documents. And she said, well, I got to go see my, my um, husband in the hospital. I'm not sure. And so I said, well, no worries. Guess what? You know what? I can schedule and I'll go see her and we can get this all taken care of. So I didn't look at the paperwork. So he said, well, I'll give you the paperwork and you can take it with you. I'm like, okay, great. And so right before I get ready to go to the appointment, some tell me like, look at the paperwork. I'm looking at the paperwork and I'm going to go see a female, but it's a young, it's a man's name on the document. I'm like, okay, so why am I going to see her when it's his name on here? And so I was, I can I still went to the appointment just to introduce myself and just let her know, like, hey, and I'm I I just wanted to introduce myself and, you know, meet you and let you know there's nothing shady or anything going on. But, you know, I can't notarize any of these documents. Who is this? Because, you know, and so she was like, oh, I have his ID. He didn't tell you. He didn't tell you. He didn't explain. I was like, um, no, ma'am. But it's regardless of whether you have his ID or not. I not can't, work, I can't right? do anything. Yeah, yeah. I, I can't do anything. I'm like, I can I can go to the hospital because he was he was the one that was in the hospital. Oh, okay. I said, well, I have okay. to know that he is competent, that he's okay with signing these documents, and it just sounded like, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm doing some. I'm, I'm not gonna be. I'm not gonna be able to do it. I asked yeah. him to change the date, and you know, it's just all this stuff. And he was like, oh, we'll give it back. And I'm like, yeah, no problem because I'm built on integrity. Yeah. Okay. And. I felt like he was like, oh, you know, she's new. She don't know anything about this. Oh, but I do. I I, I know enough yeah. to know, <laughs> you know, because I'm, I'm building a business, right? So I got to yeah. know some of this stuff. And so, yeah, Mary, yeah, I just felt Mary, like- I think you, uh, you, you encountered uh, what many of us encounter on occasion. And sometimes, sometimes it might be uh, nefarious, right? They might be trying to pull something over on you. What I have learned with attorneys is that we give them a lot more credit on what they know about notary law than they actually know about notary law. So mm -hmm. he probably just thought that that would be okay, oh, but I can't speak for him, right? But I'm so glad that you have enhanced your education enough to know what you can do and you can't do because that is really what integrity is all about. So thank you yeah. so much for sharing. And don't that. backdate, y'all. Don't backdate. Don't, <laughs> don't backdate, backdate ever. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Meredith. We're going to move on to the next segment of today's show. And this is what uh, John Braddock is all about, right? Is my life and wishes. The reason he created this legacy vault is that after you do get all your stuff together, where do you keep it? And it's it can be overwhelming, but that's what we're going to do. We're going to take baby steps through this. John, I'm going to turn it over to you. Let's do some exercise in growing the legacy vault. Let's do it. Let me also say, guys, if you would like to check it out, if you want to work along with us, because that's part of the value of this, is we're actually going to take baby steps together. You can uh, either log into your account if you're already a user of the My Life and Wishes Legacy Vault. If you're not, you can get a free trial and just start your account right now. It's a 30-day free trial. Check it out, mylifeandwishes.com. I'll post a link in the chat for you so you can work along with us. Go ahead, John. I actually, yeah, I actually just posted a link in oh. there where people can create an account if they have not done so yet. Perfect. And we're going to do a screen share. I know uh, many of you already have an account, which is awesome. And some of you started a free trial last week. 
also awesome. Um, this is the page if you don't have an account um, to create your account. It's simply your name, first and last, your email address, create a password. Password will not work until where this red bar is. It's all lit up as dark green. Then just prove you're not a robot and agree and create your account. So really simple. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to log into the account that I created last week when we were all together. And it says my credentials aren't valid. So we'll try that again. <laughs> and, and they are valid. And as you can see, it says I am on day eight of my 30-day free trial. So I have uh, a couple things I can do there. If I want to stay just in my free trial, I can stay in my free trial. Or what I can do is I can click upgrade subscription. You know, I'll just point this out. If you upgrade your subscription, you choose your plan. I recommend annual, not monthly. And it says it's $129 a year. But as I mentioned last week, if you put in the code for my family and click apply, you're going to save $30 a year on the platform. It's $99 uh, to be in there. So I just want to make sure uh, you don't pay more than you should because we put this together, Bill and I, for everyone who's uh, here participating with us. So what I hear from people all the time is, wow, there's so much stuff that I have to put in here. It's going to be overwhelming. And so I want to make it easy. And I want to do that over the course of however long we continue to meet. And I hope we do it uh, for a long time because I really enjoyed having Corey on tonight and we'll get some amazing guests. But when we have the account, you know, there's some things that people say, um, well, where should I start? What should I do first? Well, what's the first thing my family would need to know if I uh, didn't make it home tonight? Need to know what are my end of life wishes. So I want to make it easy. So let's make it easy and work through the process. So if I go to end of life and I go final arrangements, because a good friend of mine, Nick, had said to me, man, John, I wish I had known that mom wanted to be cremated before I buried her. True story. Mm. He found out three months later, digging through mom's things, mom had written in her journal, I would like to be cremated. It was like, great, thanks, mom. Let's have a conversation, shall we? So, and there's a lot of things that we can put in end of life wishes. I mean, we can, we can write our own eulogy or obituary notes. I put that in because I want someone to say something nice about me, so I'm going to write it for them and have it in there. <clears throat> but here's the first question of the 130 questions our families are going to have to answer in the first 48 hours. Where should we take dad? My father-in-law was still on his bedroom floor, and we're in the living room, and the medical examiner, she said, where should we take dad? And we're like, I have no idea. There's like 15 funeral homes in town and we are in shock. So let's make it easy for family. You know, Chris, did you say, it's, John, did you say it's like 136 or 160 decisions that somebody has to make in the first 24 hours after someone dies? Yes, I started uh, actually uh, writing them out and I believe where I'm at so far is 121 questions. Oh, crazy. And as soon as I get that finished, I'm actually going to publish it just to, as you know, like that just it's a handout. You know, like, people can just download this. Here's the questions that they're going to have to answer. Cause that's like the first one. What funeral? Where do we take dad? Next one is what are we going to do with the body? Burial or cremation? Um, final resting place. Where do you want the ashes scattered? Or, you know, have you done pre-planning? Do you have a plot uh, at a local cemetery? Who do you want to perform the service? Is it your, your pastor, your rabbi? Um, do you just want a little memorial service? These are questions that family have to think through. Like within 24 hours, 48 hours, you know, is there a funeral? Who are the pallbearers going to be? 
Who's going to speak at the service? What about uh, food, drink? What about the flowers? Where do those go? Donations, grave markers, any other notes? So what I tell people is, look, this doesn't have to be hard. And you can change it anytime you want, but don't burden the family if I don't make it home tonight. Say, look, something happens to me, press you at home, I want to be cremated. You know what I love about this too, John, is I have a friend who actually has a Spotify list of her funeral music already oh. created ahead of time. So she could put her link right in here. Exactly. I love that. I absolutely love that. Yeah, you'll store that in the, uh, the, the, the website login uh, area. So, nice. so I've got the funeral wishes in there. What's the next question family's going to have? Because when I'm sitting across the table from the funeral director, and while they're telling me how sorry they are for my loss, they're passing me a bill across the table, which needs to be paid, by the way, before we, you know, inter dad into the ground. Well, how are we going to pay for that? I mean, most of us don't just have a, you know, $15,000 sitting in our account, right? So... Let's go to documents and accounts. And this is, this is easy for you to do. Go to insurance policies. Click add an insurance policy. And in the drop down, we have a bunch of different options. And there's even other option. And you can name whatever kind of policy. But life insurance is usually what pays for it. And if you don't know all the other particulars, just put uh, you know, the company. Prudential. So I can just say life insurance policy with Prudential and I can save it. It's now in there. My family, that, that's a tremendous roadmap. I mean, over a billion dollars in life insurance has gone unclaimed because people don't know that their deceased family member had a life insurance policy. So at least minimal information if my family knows i have life insurance at prudential they can google prudential and call prudential and find out the information so you don't have to make it hard right away let's just build the roadmap um now if you want to be a little more helpful um you know who's your uh insurance agent that sold you the policy yeah, maybe that's tom smith but I don't know his phone number and I don't know my policy number right now and those kind of things. That's okay. Just save it. Because now we know who the insurance agent is. So now family would be able to call that person. Do you have another life insurance policy? You can add that in. So now I've just told my family, if I don't make it home tonight, because it takes me a while to fill all this out, but I just told them the first thing you need to know, this is what you do with, the body because I don't need it anymore. Then the second thing is, I know you're going to have to pay for some things. Here's a life insurance. Contact the insurance company. Here's the other thing that can be helpful. Go to financial. And under financial, we have a place for bank accounts, loans, credit cards, investments, right? Okay, let's just start with bank accounts. Okay, I put a couple in last week to show you how easy it was. I said, I have a bank account, it's a savings account, and it's with Chase Bank. Okay, at a minimum, that's all I have to do. I might not know my account number off the top of my head, it doesn't matter. I'm building a roadmap for my family. Now they know where they can go. Now, maybe another day I come back in and I say, you know, here's my account number. Here's the address, the local branch. How do I get the statements? They come by email. Where do you keep the, the, the checkbook, dad, so we can destroy all the checks and things? Um, you know, we can put link it to the bank, ATM cards but we don't have to do it now. And even if we never got to, we're still being 
very helpful to family uh, in this process. So the other thing, and we'll leave it at this for today. I just want to make it easy. If you have an account, I want you to go in. The first thing family needs to know is your end of life wishes. Just put them in. It's not that hard. You, you know what you want. I think. Um, then uh, go to the uh, uh, insurance policy and list any life insurance you have. And you don't have to put all the details. Just, just put that little bit in, just that in the company. And then go to advisors and select advisors, add an advisor. And if you have an attorney, whoever did your will or your trust, select attorney. And it's, uh, you know, Bill Roberts, whatever his name might no, be. No, it's not, John. It's Peter. <laughs> it is Peter. <laughs> I, I know it's scary. You know who my estate planning attorney is. I know. Is. I feel like I, I know all, all, all the things. So I can put my estate plan attorney in and, and I can just leave it at that. If I don't want to put anyone, oh, God, I can't remember the name of that firm. It's like Smith, Osmond, Phil, something, 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 and somebody, right? Because they're all these big, long things. Um, my kids can get on the internet and Google Peter Osmond attorney and find him right right so get that person in there because when we die our family's going to have to work with an attorney hopefully not for probate keep us out of that yeah so you're going to put your end of life preference that you have life insurance who the estate planning attorney is and one final thing, which they can get from the attorney, but this will make it easier. Back under your documents and accounts, select documents, select add a document. And if you have a will or a trust, if you just have a basic will, select will. And type in the location of it. Where is it? It's in... You know, bottom left hand desk drawer. Tell your family where it is. Because they're going to need that piece of information too. These are the, the most critical things that family's going to need within the first few days following death. What happens to my body? Do I have life insurance? How's this sucker getting paid for? Do I have a will? Where do we find it? And how do we get a hold of your attorney? And someone to help with it. Huge. We can always go back, which we're going to in future episodes. And we're going to go in and, you know, upload a document. We're going to create more information. And if it's not a will, if it's a trust, click other record and say it's your family trust or whatever you call it, but just start building that out step by step. Much like that weight loss program that we talked about a week or so ago, which we can't lose 30 pounds overnight, but we can in 90 days. Let's get this done in 90 days. Because next week I plan to ask an attorney if I died and didn't have all this stuff put together, how much time is it going to take the family and how much money are they going to have to spend with you to have you find all this? Yeah, that's huge. You know, you work so hard to build a legacy, to, and to have some savings that you can pass down to your family. And if you don't take care of this stuff, it gets whittled away so quickly. So I'm looking forward to that, John. Guys, if, there, if you're on tonight's call, we love having you here. I hope this is time that you are reserving to make some progress on this. Do the homework today. This is your progress time, right? You're here already. Work on doing this together with us in your My Life and Wishes account. Step by step, step you'll get there. Remember, the best way to eat an elephant is one bite at a time. 
Yes. So that's what Indeed. we're here for. And, you know, and if you're working on your account, you know, during the week, you decide, you know, I mean, 15 minutes before Chicago fire starts. And so I'll enter a couple of things into the account and you see that and you have questions, jot them down. Um, because we just want to make this fun. And, you know, next week, ask the questions and let's all do this together. I mean, we, you know, last week we had 30 some, 37 people, I think. I think today we had up to 42. Um, you know, we'll have a good core of people getting on who are all like-minded and, and planning. Yeah. Uh, you know. That's 40 people a week protecting their legacy. If right. we do work together. So let's, uh, why don't you, I'm sorry, John. You, uh, yeah, I was going to say, just because, you know, this is serious stuff. And that's why we always have the, you know, legacy and libations and stuff. I haven't told a joke, so I have to tell I'm a just, joke. I was just going to bring that up. I'm like, I haven't heard a cheesy joke on life and death all afternoon. Right. So a good buddy of mine, Tom, uh, He's a single guy. He's living at home with his dad. He works in a family business, right? Well, sadly, he found out that he was going to inherit a fortune once his sickly father died. And so he decided he really needed to have a wife with whom he could share this fortune because, you know, why have all this money and, you know, not care. So one evening, he's out at a bar and he spotted the most beautiful woman he'd ever seen in his life. I mean, her natural beauty literally took his breath away. He went up to her. He says, look, I may look like just an ordinary guy. He said, but you know what? In a few years, my father will be dead. And I'm inheriting $20 million. Well, she was so impressed. She asked him for his business card. He followed back up. Three days later, she became a stepmother. I was like, I can see where this is going. <laughs> hey, I don't, you know, I don't make them up. I just repeat them and they're bad. But it's, I, I don't even want to know the chat GPT you typed in there to get that joke. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's open it up for Q&A. Thank you so much for being here. What kind of questions do you have for John and I? Uh, John, and I'm going to turn it over to you real quick. I'll be right back. Yeah. Do we have some questions or random chat? I've got a question. I think you answered it, but I'll, I'm just, just to double check because I haven't seen this before. Um, on your, you chose Will and you put it in the bottom left hand drawer of your whatever. That upload document. I'm assuming you can upload your will to that. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So within it can be with, both places, actually. E exactly, and that's that's such a great question because what I, my my first uh, objective is to get people to build a roadmap, at least guide family in the right step. But yes, what what we really want to do is we want to tell them where the original is, but we want to upload a copy of it. Because, um, so my daughter lives in Florida and I'm in Arizona. If she got that phone call that said, hey, you know what, dad passed away, you got to get out here because she's got to settle things out uh, and, and, and do things, right? So how much easier would it be for her? Because it's going to take, you know, 24 hours before she can probably get on an airplane anyway and head out this way. And then she'd have to get out of here and now start looking and digging for, you know, the, the will or the trust and find out who the attorney is and contact him and stuff. But if I've told her where it is at home, but there's a copy stored here, she can actually open it up, you know, from her, from her computer, her smartphone, her tablet in Florida and download a copy of it and start calling the attorney or making plans or arrangements before she even gets on the airplane to come. Yeah. You know, my, I want family to be able to quickly get through a process. I want them to be able to grieve the loss without the, the, the frustration 
and the stress and the morbid scavenger hunt of digging through all dead dad stuff. This is part of the uh, value that um, estate planning attorneys see in this too, right, John? Because Ev, it's not even just the you know the individual who can upload their will, but John's primary client for my life and wishes is estate planning attorneys. So when they partner with them, they actually, after the documents are signed, they'll upload the entire living trust package to a my life and wishes account grant access to that user. So they have all of this stuff all in place. So the entire living trust is already preloaded. It's in there and accessible. Yeah. And, and, and really the reason the attorneys, you know, I mean, they love it. They open the account form, they upload the documents, they hand them off to the client. And then they tell the client, make sure you do this stuff. Enter the bank accounts, list these things in there because, you know, God forbid, you die and we end up having to go to probate these are all the things that your family is going to have to gather and produce and you know either you can do it ahead of time make it easy or my bill gets a lot more expensive for them on the back end after you're gone that's the thing, right? And I know we're we're going to have an attorney to talk about this, but attorneys bill out. I don't even think they're less than three hundred dollars an hour anymore. Like that used to be pretty high, but I think that's pretty normal now. It's three hundred to seven hundred dollars an hour, and they're mm-hmm. going to bill that out for the research. Everything that they have to do, they have to hunt and scavenge for this. It's getting billed out at those rates. It's not like they discount it for right. thirty five dollars for rummaging a filing cabinet it's their time and they're billing for it yeah my uh my estate planning attorney peter osman uh, <laughs> he told me that when when many times when they have to probate an estate especially if the decedent was not their client family has no idea of all the location of the assets they literally reach out to every financial institution within the geographic area to find out if the deceased person had any accounts there because family doesn't know. And that's expensive when you think about uh, that process. You know, they probably have a paralegal do most of the, you know, the, 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 the heavy lifting on the front end, but still the paralegal, it's, it's gonna be at least $100 an hour. Yeah. John, how long does how long do we own the account for? Once we open the account, once we create. For my life, I'm sorry. Marie, is that what you were saying? Yes. And if we stop being an NVB member, do we have access to it? <laughs> Still. Yeah. Good question, Marie. Thank you. So, let's talk about that real quick, and then I'll turn it over to John. NBB members, Notary Business Builder members, do get the My Life and Wishes account uh, as part of their membership. If you cancel NBB, then it would revert over to a regular paid uh, membership at My Life and Wishes. Of course, there's a coupon code to help make that uh, or to discount that for you as well. And then so you, John, you want to talk about the life of an account and what's expected there? Yeah, I mean, really, uh, you know, with with the account, it's uh, it's an annual, uh, you know, subscription. As long as uh, the subscription uh, is is paid, the account uh, is active. Um, we'll get into uh, next week how to share the account with a spouse or partner, um, assigning authorized users so that people would have the access when they need it. But, um, you know, uh, you know, a lot of people, they just keep it uh, forever. Some people put all their stuff in there and then go to the print out feature and print all their stuff off and think, okay, I'm going to save a hundred dollars a year, but things change so rapidly passwords and, you know, those kind of things, which in my opinion, doesn't make sense. I mean, some people spend, as much as a subs- an annual subscription to this, just in coffee at Starbucks, you know, on a monthly basis, and this is an annual subscription. 
Um, if a person decides they no longer want the subscription, they can cancel it within the platform. Um, it will stay uh, kind of in a frozen uh, state, if you will, for 90 days following your cancellation in case you change your mind. Um, you'd be able to log back in and do it. After 90 days of canceling a subscription, all the information is permanently expunged from the system. Great, thank you. Great question. Thank you so much, Murray. All right, we're about five minutes at past the hour, which is about one hour since we started. We have time for another final question. Anybody sitting back, not asking the question they want to ask? Yet, now's your time. All right. Okay, I will. What is the membership cost? Uh, the the membership cost uh, for the program is one hundred and twenty nine dollars a year. Mm -hmm. um, but we have a uh, special coupon code that can be used which is for my family. And that uh, makes the account $99 a year. So it's a $30 savings. Okay, thank year. you. You bet, Marie, mm -hmm. thank you. All right, let's wrap it up, John, what do you say? I say it's been fun. You have such great people out there, Bill. Yeah, we really do. Amazing, loving community. Thanks for hanging out with us on a Wednesday night. We'll be back next week. Our goal is to bring you uh, special guests that will talk about different aspects of life, death, and the beverages that help get us through it. So, John, thank you so much for introducing us to Corey. And thanks for being here. Thank you all for sharing your time. We will see you same time, same place next Wednesday, 4 p.m. Pacific. Bye-bye. Stay well, all.